Hello all, in this particular tutorial we will learn how to do an oracle database arm and restore like a champion. You had a bad day, you were in a bad mood, something was not right and you ended up dropping a wrong database. Now it's not about dropping the database, it's about recovering the data. And if you follow these particular practices, probably you will save you from a lot of trouble. A good DBA will make sure your databases are backed up. A good DBA will make sure that restored procedures are tested. So you don't only take the backup, you also verify that you are able to restore that particular backup. You will make sure that the backups are stored securely on a different location than the server itself. And a good DBA will make sure that backup reports are generated when the backup ran where those backups are stored, etc, etc. Let's understand the Oracle database physical files. Oracle database is consists of parameter file, which is the first file that is read by Oracle. And it is nothing but a configuration file related to memory, database name, control file, location, etc. Control file is the is the information about the database itself, the physical database information. It also stores the information about the RMAN backup. Without control file, you cannot open your database. Data file or table spaces is the logical, uh, table, data files is physical, table spaces is logical, contains metadata and data dictionary of the database, also contains user or application data. Redo logs is nothing but the changes that you make to the database and it allows you in case of recover, in case of instance failure. Archive redo log files is the copy of your redo logs and the password file allows you for local or remote connections to an Oracle database. The database open stage is like, first it will read the parameter file and it will go in the no mount mode. Then it will read the control file. It will go in the mount mode and it will open the data file and redo logs and it will go in the open mode. Now remember that Oracle database always go through all of the stages. It will first go in no mount, then mount open. Now this particular diagram or this particular diagram is exactly same. So first reads the parameter file, goes in no mount mode, reads the control file, goes in the mount mode, opens the data file and logs and goes into open mode. Now another one thing that I would like to explain here is like if your parameter file is not there, you cannot go in no mount mode. If control file is not there, you can't go in the mount mode. Now it's not like if you don't have the parameter file, but you have the control file, let's go in the mount mode. No, it's not possible. You have to follow this diagram. You have to go no mount, mount and open. The SP file, P file and the password file is stored in Oracle home DBS location. Control file information can be found from dynamic view, V$ control file, data file, V$ data file, redo log, V$ log file, log file and archive log file in V$ archive log. The there are two kinds of parameter file. One is the binary based file, which is SP file, the text based file, which is init file. If both of these particular files are present, Oracle will read SP file and not the init file. Only if SP file is not there, it will read the init file. Now remember the naming convention of this is SP file SID.ora. So if your Oracle SID is DB, it will be SP file DB.ora and init DB.ora. The password file, the naming convention of the password file is aura pwdb if db is sid and this particular file is allows you for local and remote connections to your database. There are advantages of using sp file. sp file is a binary file. You, there are advantages of using sp file such as you can change some of the parameter without restarting your database. Not all but some of these parameter and hence I, I would recommend you to use sp file and rarely edit file. All of these files, SP file, init file, and the aura password file can be found in Oracle Home DBS. Now, one thing that I would like to highlight once again, if both of these particular files are there, then Oracle will only read the SP file. It will ignore the init file. Only if the SP file is not there, it will go for init file. The restoration of your database, if for some reason you have dropped the entire database, your entire database crashed, you don't have SP file, you don't have control file, you don't have data files, then these are the steps that you will follow to restore your complete database. 
first you will restore the sp file then you will restore the control file then you will restore the database you will recover the database and you will open the database in reset logs mode now remember one thing you will ask me if i don't i have i said here that without parameter file you can't go in the no mod mode so the question that you will ask me is how am i starting my database if i have lost the sp file the trick here is you have to create a dummy init file so you'll create a dummy init file and that dummy init file will only contain it will it will be only used to restore the sp file so you'll create a dummy init file start your instance with that dummy init file then you will restore the sp file and then you can drop that or delete that particular file and then the next steps you will do using sp file so you'll shut about and start up no mount again to to start your database using the sp file now that we have seen all the steps let's see something let's let's take out let's see where is our where is our database file stored so now before doing that let's see if we have any kind of backup so let's connect to our database and let's connect using rman target and let's see list backup let's run the command list backup and let's see if we have any backup and looks like specification does not match which means we don't have any backup we can also use v order backup file to get the similar information so let's run this query select star you can do select star from v order backup file and looks like we don't have any backup at all we don't have any backup now first thing that we should be doing is we should be taking the backup of our database because we do not have any kind of backup at all in our environment we we have if this particular database crashes we don't have anything to rely on so let's try to take first backup and the i've and looks like the backup is completed so let's run list backup command to verify that backup is completed and you can see i have taken an incremental backup and the same information you can find from here you can see i have got the data file sp file control file the sp file control file backup it has been taken because there is an auto backup that has been set now that we have the backup let's let's and let's do something let's find out the in the we have got two tables called hr.employee we have two employees one is rock and water and we have got two departments it and admin so what we will be doing let me add and close here order by amp id and here i'll add order by department id so what what we got is like our organization is expanding and a third employee joins and we decided to we decided to in, in add another departments called r d department to our organization so now instead of two employees we should have three employees rock water and air and instead of two department we should have three department id admin it admin and r d looks like now that we have made some changes let's go ahead and take uh, another archive log backup i'm not going to take a full backup let's take an archive log backup now as a as a as a good dba i told you that you should store the information where are your archive log backups where is your backup set information etc so let's go to this particular location and identify what we got here so this is the location where all the backups are stored so let's see we got archive log backup that's good we got auto backup that's good we got backup set so let's go into the auto backup we should have two auto backup first for the full incremental level zero backup and the second one is for the second one is for the uh, the uh, archive log backup and that is correct we have got two auto backups now what what we what we will do is like we'll just see what how is our where is our database etc i'm not going to show you the redo log etc etc but i'll just i'll show you where is my data file and where is our control file let's go to that location so let me put it here any data file so all of the data files are under the same location so let me put it here and let's see where is our control file information etc so let's and that is also under the similar location so now what we will do is like we will navigate to that particular location i'll open another session clear and let's navigate to that particular session location and pwd and under this particular location you can see control files redo logs system data files temp files undo users everything is under the same location now we will also take a look i'll open one more session and we will also take a look at the at the oracle home dbs so let's go to that location 
and ls minus l and we can see here sp file prod or our password prod so we got the the under the oracle home dbs we got the sp file and the oracle we don't have the init file because we are not using the init file now now what what we are going to do is we have seen everything so what we are going to do now is we 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 had a requirement to drop the test database so on this particular machine you can see there are two databases one is the prod database and one is the test database the requirement was to drop the test database and you thought okay let me drop the test database so let's open the dbca and delete database and instead of selecting the test database you ended up selecting prod you did not see that clearly and you 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 selected prod database and you clicked next click next and clicked finish and you were not in the you were you you had a lot of pressure or you were having a very long day or probably not a good mood and you ended up you selected prod and you never realized that actually that you selected a prod and you went ahead and dropped that particular database so you can see the database deletion completed now let's close this and then you looked at you looked at the prod and the test is still there but the prod is gone and then the application team tried to run the query to find out how many em employees are there and they are getting tns listener so the application team is unable and the the, the you can see that the prod database is gone let's take a look at our data directories and you can see everything under that location is gone we don't have the control file we don't have the redo logs we don't have any of the data files let's take a look at the dbs location and you can see the sp file for the prod is gone the password file for the prod is gone so we have we don't have the sp file we don't have the prod we don't have the password file looks like we did something wrong now only way to save you from this particular trouble is restoring your database so you are going to follow this particular steps to restore your complete database so first you need to have a dummy init file and let's do that so let's let's you can see here there is a sample init file so what we are going to do is we are going to copy that as we are going to copy that particular file as the let me as the the sid so let's do that and what i will also do is i will add an entry in etc or a tab because when the dbca would have dropped the database it would have also deleted and you can see here it has we have only the test entry we don't have the we don't have the prod entry so let's add the entry otherwise what we'll have to do is like we'll have to manually set the sid etc etc so i'm creating the entry and let's verify that and you can see we have the entry for the prod database now let's set the environmental variable the prod that's good and uh, now what we what we will do is like we have just copied we have just copied this particular file so let's modify this particular file this is this is the, that sample file and if you don't have the sample file here then you can always go on the internet and find out we don't need a lot of the parameters we need only few parameters so let's modify this particular file so we are going to modify the audit file dash we are going to uh we don't need the recovery we don't need okay let's do this okay so we don't need the recovery dash so let's get rid of that the db name would be so let's get rid of all of this and let, the db name that we wanted to restore is broad so let's do that the compatible parameters uh, should be nineteen. We our database is nineteen, and we need the location of audit file dash. So let's add the location of the audit file dash in our in our uh, p file, the sample p file. So let's add that particular location. That's done. And probably this particular directory may not exist. So let's create that particular directory. So clear, make directory minus p. This is the audit dash directory. So that's done. Let's verify our init file one time. Uh, 
Aura. I missed something here. Aura. And you can see, let's. And DB name. And we have set these particular parameters. We don't have to. We don't have to set a lot of the parameter. This is again, this is a, just a sample file that we are going to use to restore our SP file. The first thing that we need to do is restore this SP file. But for that, we need to start our database in no mod mode. And for that, I just created this dummy file. So let's set the environmental variable. That's done. Let's go into SQL plus SSDBA and start up our database in no mod mode. That's the first step. Once the database is started in the no mount mode, then what we will be doing is we will exit from this and connect as our main target. And as I told you, we need to restore the SP file. To restore the SP file, you will run, you will run a command something like this. And I'm going to show you what, what that particular command is. So restore SP file too. So you will specify where, so Oracle Home DBS, the name of the SP file that you want to restore and from the auto backup from the auto backup. So let's go to this particular auto backup location. Not here. Here. So yeah, I'm already into that directory. So let's take that particular directory and put that directory name here, the country and the name of the auto backup file. And this is where your reports will come into picture the information about the backup and this particular information you can get from here as well you can see this is the auto backup i'm using this is the s02 backup that i'll be using so let's verify that i'm using uh no, yeah i'm not using s02 i'm using qz so let's uh yeah so i'm using this particular auto backup file so now now that i have formed this particular restore sp file to the location the name of sp file and then from which auto backup you are restoring. So once you have formed this particular command, let's take this particular command and hit that particular command in our R man target session. And once that is done, let's go to, let's exit from R man target. Let's clear the screen ls minus l sp file. And you should be able to see that we got the sp file prod dot aura. Now what we are going to do now is we are going to again start our database. So in the sp file mode so to do that what we'll do is like we'll say shut about and we will say startup no mount so the i fired these two commands now shut about and startup mount and this time our database will be and you, you can verify that show parameter sp file you can verify that you here using that our database has been started with the sp file so that looks good now that we have restored the sp file it's time to restore the control file but before so we have to restore the control file but before restoring the control file let me go back one more time and let's see if we have got that particular directory probably we may not have the directory and yes we don't have that particular directory so i'm going to go to that particular directory and let me go into that directory clear pwd ls minus l and i'm going to tell you that my my control files will get restored here and how is that possible i'm not when i say restore control file and i'll show you that particular command so when when i'm going to restore the control file this time i'm not going to say i'm not going to say the i'm not going to say where it has to be restored so you can see i'm going to form this particular command so restore control file from this is the command and I'm going to use the same auto backup that I used to restore the SP file. So let's do that. And anytime. Yeah, so restore control file from so I'm going to use this particular command. And when I use this particular command, you can see that I'm not specifying the location of the control file. So where is the control file getting how it is going to and I told you that it will get restored into this location. So how the control file will get restored here and that is determined by the fact that our SP file, our SP file has the control file information. So if I say show parameter control, then you will be able to see that I've got a parameter called control file and it is dbd slash aura data slash prod control 01.ctl control 02.ctl. So that will be two control files that will get restored automatically. So let's do that 
So I'm going to exit from SQL plus and let me connect as our main target and I'm going to hit the restore control file command in the RMAN and it's going to restore two control files for me. So you can see under this location it has restored. So now if I go here, I can I can see the control files have come back. So the, the next the control files have been also restored. Looks like everything finished restored. So that yes is good. The next part is now starting the database in starting the database in. So we we have to now restore the database, but to restore the database, our database should be in the mount mode. So let's go and put our database into the mount mode using ultra database mount and we can run this particular command either in the rman or either in the sql plus doesn't matter we can run some of the sql uh, sql plus commands in the and that's done and now it's time so we are into mount mode so we have we are we are here so restore the database so we are going to restore the database and I'm, I, I want you to i want to, to you to keep an eye on this so i'm going to minimize all of these windows and i'm going to Put it here and clear this particular location so this is the this particular location and here we have got only the control files and when i say restore database when i say restore database is going to is going to go and create all the db data files etc etc system sysocs users etc under this location and how does it identify where to put your data file and that information is in the control file the control file knows where the data files should be restored so let's take a look at this so i've done this and you can see dbd or our data prod it's restoring all of this and now if i do go here you can see all of my files so control file has the information about your data file so let's see that if the restore and you can see finish restore is done so now restore is done we are at the recover database so let's go and hit the recover database command and it looks for missing archive log that's okay that is fine and what we are at the final step what we are going to do now is we are going to open our database in reset logs mode so let's do that again we can run this particular command using rman or you can we can run that and now we will see that we have we have redo logs etc so we we got redo logs here so looks like our database is completely restored now what what we will try to do is we will try to see if we can we can connect to this particular database and you can see that although our database is up and i'm going to show it to you so let me exit let me clear let me set the environmental variable and let me connect as sql plus as sysdba and select name which will be prod open mode which will be read write from v dollar database so open read write and even though our database is open read write we are still not able to connect so it looks like there is a listener configuration or the tns configuration which is missing so we have two ways of fixing this we can either create a static registration in the listener.aura that's one thing or we can create the dynamic registration you can choose whatever you want we can create a static so let me create a static registration again you can choose any of the options so for that we have to go to this oracle home uh, network admin under that you can either create a dynamic registration using tns names or you can create a static registration using listener so let's create a static registration so i'm going to edit the listener file and what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a static registration that's done and then what I'm going to do is I'll before showing that I'll show you that the, the prod database is not registered. So you can see only the test database is registered, which means we will be able to connect to the test database, but the prod database is not registered. The command that I ran was LSNR CTL status. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run LSNR CTL reload because I made some changes. I don't have to start and stop the listener. I can just say reload. So it will read the uh, listener control file, listener.aura file, and it's going to reload the settings. So let's do that. That's done. Now let's see the status, and we should be able to see that we we have the prod. So now what we will do is like looks like everything is done. Let's try to see if we can run the particular query. So let's run this particular query, and you can see now that we are getting a different error. So now we were able to reach to the database but database is saying that the user password is not correct and because what we did is like we are running these queries under the sys user if it was another user it could have worked but we are using the sys user and that's the problem 
So now what we will do is like we will see if we have an password file. So Aura password file. And um, so I'm not under the Oracle Home. So let's let me go under the Oracle Home DBS. And let's see if we have an Aura password file. And looks like we don't have the Aura password file that's causing this particular problem. And because of this, this Aura password file which is missing, we are unable to connect to our database. So what we will do is like we will try to create the, the password file. And to do that, what we need to do is we need to run an Aura password utility and looks like I don't have it, which is fine. Okay, yeah, I have it. So what we are going to do is we are going to run Aura password utility file is equal to name of the file sys is equal to y so we are going to run this particular utility we will we will we will enter that particular and what we will now do is like alter user so what we will do is like we will finally shut our database we will start our database and we will alter your user, alter user sys to the old password. And I have hit all these commands. So let's wait for all of these commands to get completed. So this is our final step. So I'm fixing the sys user. Because when I created the Aura password file, I gave a different password file. So now I'm syncing the Aura password file. So that looks good and now if I run this particular query if everything goes fine let's wait and you can see we have the same three employees rock water and air we got three departments IT admin and R&D we got we got our we got our SP file restored so we got SP file restored we got our password file restored we got our all the data files redo logs restored so which means we have done a complete recovery of our database and we before doing that we actually dropped that particular database so we fixed the we fixed the etc aura tab we fixed sp file we recreated password file we restored control file, we restore the database, we recover the database and we open the database in reset logs mode. And we also fixed the connectivity issue because when the DBCA dropped the database, it actually deleted the con network configuration, the listener.aura or the uh, TNS name.aura configuration for this particular database and we fixed that particular as well. So if you ever, if you ever get into the situation where you dropped a wrong database, if you have this particular strategy in place, if you have your proper backups, you will be able to restore your database. And only way to restore your database is having all of these procedures in place, making sure your backups are, you are, you are taking the backups and you have the reports, you know where the backups are. It's not just having the backup, it's about knowing where those backups are stored and at what time those backups are ran. If you, if you have if you like this particular tutorial if you have if you if you will be able to restore your database then hit the like button and thank you for watching and see you in next tutorial bye bye